And we are now broadcasting, which allows them in and starts recording. Let's see. All right, I'm looking at the participant number has stopped going up, so, and it's six o'clock, so hi everybody. My name's Jessica Downing, I'm at Indercom High in Sacramento, and I'm just here to facilitate and introduce you, or they will introduce themselves to the college reps. Um, you all have your cameras and microphones off, right? So they can't see or hear you, and that's just because we're in webinar mode instead of Zoom chat. But if you have any questions, please click on the Q&A button and you type your questions at any time. Um, if you're interested in other colleges or other areas, you can sign up for more presentations so you have access to the schedule at collegecareerfairsconnect.org. And all of these sessions will be recorded. So if there's one that you couldn't make, um, you'll be able to check on the recordings afterwards. And the college reps are going to get lists of your names and be able to follow up on any questions that um, you may not be able to ask during the session. So I'm gonna turn it over to them. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, my name is Matt Allen. I am the Director of Admissions at the University of Montana Western. And we're going to start off by, uh, I'm going to give you just a real brief overview of uh, what, what the WUI program is, uh, just so you have a better understanding of it. And then I'll do it really quickly. And then that way we can dive into um, what each institution does in regard to WUI. And you can hear a little bit more about, um, you know, these fantastic uh, universities uh, that are here tonight. So um, everybody should be able to see my screen. And so, um, like I say, so the WUI program, it is, uh, stands for the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, but you'll see it abbreviated as WUE. Um, and pronounced as wooey. So um, let me make sure my slides are transitioning. All right, excellent. So the governing body of wooey is the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education, known as WICHE. And so this is their website. I definitely want to point this out because their website is a great resource for you to do research to find out what universities participate in the wooey program. So definitely write, uh, write this website down. Um, or, like I said, you can always go to Google and just type in Witchy or Wooey, and typically you can find this website uh, relatively easily. But it's a great place to start if you're trying to do research and find schools that are um, offering the Wooey program. So, but what is a Wooey? Um, the number thing, number one thing that I always try and let students know is, is Wooey is a tuition reduction. And so a lot of times I'll deal with students here at Montana Western where they'll call and they'll be like, well, how much is the WUI scholarship worth? What's the monetary value of it? And always remember that WUI, it's not necessarily worth a, a certain amount. It's a tuition reduction. And so um, most institutions, it's up to 150% of in-state tuition is what you end up paying. So um, it's not necessarily you get a certain amount of money. It's just that uh, your tuition is reduced to that 150% of in-state tuition. So um, the great thing about the WUI program is it opens the door to education opportunities that you may not thought you had. A lot of students think that out-of-state uh, colleges and universities are unaffordable. It can be difficult to go to because they're expensive. But WUI can really make things more affordable and it opens the doors to hundreds of majors. And as you can see, a lot of different institutions uh, that out there that are, are participating in this fantastic program. And you can also pursue two and four year degrees um, because you can receive the WUI uh, scholarship uh, for, for two and four year programs. So um, this map is uh, a great resource as well because this will show you which states participate in WUI. And so this doesn't necessarily mean that every institution in these states will have a WUI program, but if it's a public institution, the majority of them do. And so if you're coming from California and you're looking to go out of state to one of the Western states, 
or um, the U.S. Pacific territories, uh, make sure you're asking those universities if they have a WUI program or utilizing the WICHE website to see if that institution has a WUI program. Like I say, the, the WUI um, scholarship, it's a tuition reduction. When you're looking at schools that have WUI uh, programs, they'll have three different rates of tuition. They'll have what's called the resident tuition for in-state students. They'll have non-resident tuition for students that are coming from out of state. And then they'll have the WUI tuition for students that meet those qualifications. And like I say, uh, resident tuition is usually the lowest. The highest is usually non-resident. But the WUI is an option for out-of-state students to have access to institutions at a much affordable rate. So each university and college sets their qualification to get WUI. This is very important to remember because if you're doing research at one institution and you meet WUI requirements, that does not mean that you're going to meet WUI requirements for all institutions that offer the same scholarship. You make, we want to make sure that you're looking into those institutions, you're doing research on their website or reaching out to them to find out what their qualifications are because like I say, every institution can be different. And then eligibility, so uh, you all, that's another thing that you wanna check into because some institutions may require you to submit an application to be eligible for the WUI. Some institutions will automatically award it. Um, and so some schools will limit the number of WUIs. So if you're starting your college search process early, you definitely wanna look into WUI because if some schools limit the WUI or they have an application process, you wanna make sure you're taking care of those steps early uh, because sometimes there's deadlines and certain things that you have to meet. So like I say, you can use the WICHE website to do research to identify schools, but you want to contact those schools individually to make sure you know what each uh, school's eligibility requirements are. Also, the qualifications to get WUI. Some institutions will look at GPAs, they'll look at uh, test scores, um, they'll look at other academic requirements. Some institutions you might have to write essays. Uh, so there's a lot of things to take into consideration. So another important aspect of the WUI is making sure that you're checking to see what the qualifications are to see if you're going to meet the, the requirements to be awarded the WUI. Um, you want to also make sure that you're checking into the length of the award. Most institutions will allow you to keep the WUI um, from semester to semester. Some institutions will cap it after four years. Um, another thing that you might want to look into too is if an institution has a transfer process for WUI. Just because you meet the freshman requirements and you're looking to stay home maybe for a year or two before you transfer to a different institution, the WUI process can be different for transfer students. So that's another thing that you want to take into consideration as you explore WUI school. Degree programs, another thing that WUI can be attached to. Some schools will limit um, programs from being WUI eligible. My wife, uh, she's a Montana resident. When she was looking at going to school, she was looking at a dental hygiene school out of the state. That school did not allow dental hygiene majors to be eligible for WUI. So just because you meet the academic requirements and eligibility requirements for a WUI doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean you'll automatically receive it because it could be tied to certain programs. Now, some schools will award it across the board for all programs. So another thing that you definitely want to uh, do research on to make sure that your major is covered by the WUI. This is just a slide to kind of show you what the WICHU website looks like when you're doing research to identify schools. So what's really great is you're able to search by state, you can search by degree type, you can search by uh, major, and you can see what institutions in that state offer the WUI program, you can see their WUI rate, and then you can also see some application information. But like I say, I definitely would use this website as a starter point if you're trying to identify schools that uh, have WUI, but definitely reach out to the schools directly once you kind of find an institution uh, that you're interested in to make sure you get all that information about the WUI requirements. So. That is a really quick intro to WUI, um, but with that, I'm gonna turn it over. I think we're first gonna hear from OSU Cascade about their program. And so I will stop sharing my screen and I will. Perfect. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Preston. I'm the Director of Admission at OSU Cascades, which is Oregon State University Cascades. And we're each talking about our universities for about five minutes. So this is just going to be a quick overview of OSU Cascades. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, that's probably not surprising because we just opened our campus about two and a half, three years ago. Um, so we started building a campus in Bend, Oregon, which is in Central Oregon. 
And this is a photo of our campus. You can see our residence hall on the right hand side. And then off in the distance is our academic building and as well as our dining hall. Uh, this is a shot of our dining hall in the snow. So yes, Bend, Oregon gets four seasons. So if you're looking for snow and a ski town, Bend might be a great fit for you. Uh, downtown area, um, we have some great outdoor activities, um, but long term, this is what our campus expansion is going to look like. We currently own about 124 acres that we're building the campus out onto. And right now we have about four buildings. And our next academic building is going to open fall 2021. Um, so if you are a senior, you're going to get to take advantage of this building and it's going to offer additional classroom spaces, as well as a cadaver lab, um, as well as some flex lab space for our engineering and art students. But if you've never heard of Bend, it's a great mountain town. Uh, like I said, there's lots of outdoor activities. So a lot of students love to ski and mountain bike um, and enjoy the outdoors. But there's also a great downtown area. Um, so this photo shows Tower Theater where we have lots of different local events. There's great shops and restaurants um, and campus is really nicely located in Bend. You can easily get to this downtown area on a bike or car, but there's another area called the Old Mill that's all located on the river and you can actually walk from campus to that area. Uh, the ski mountain of Mount Bachelors is about 20 minutes away, so certainly our students love our location. Um, and this photo, this is only about 10 minutes away from campus. Another reason a lot of students like OSU Cascades is we're a smaller version of Oregon State University. So if you're looking for more of a small liberal arts feel, OSU Cascades might be a great fit for you. Um, our average class size is 18 students, so our, our students definitely get to know our faculty members. Not only do they get to know our faculty members, they come from all over the place because a lot of times faculty members are drawn to Bend. They want to come to Bend and teach here. Um, so we have award-winning faculty, Baman Abasi in the middle. He's actually doing uh, some federally funded research on salt water um, and making it drinkable and then also taking fracking water um, and, and making it um, cleaner and environmentally friendly. Any student at OSU Cascades is also offered experiential learning. So that could be study abroad for you, that could be research. Um, we really believe in taking what you learn in the classroom and applying it to real world experiences because uh, that builds your resume, but also hopefully confirms that it's what you want to study and it's what you want to do. And because of that, a lot of our students go on to work at amazing places. Uh, you get an OSU degree at OSU Cascades. You can also pretty easily transfer between the two campuses. You don't have to reapply. You actually can just change campuses. Um, so our students, some of our programs actually have 100% job placement rates uh, because of that experiential learning and that personalized attention. In regards to our WUI scholarship, uh, we actually just rejoined WUI, so Oregon State University offered it a number of years ago, and then it got really strict to different academic programs, uh, but now it is offered for all of our degree programs, both on the main campus in Corvallis, as well as the OSU Cascades campus. We did go test optional this year. So um, our WUI scholarship is test optional and you will automatically be considered for WUI with your application for admission. So we're taking a very holistic approach. We do not have a minimum GPA, but it is competitive. Um, I like to stress that not every student that applies as a non-resident student will get a WUI scholarship. If you do not get a WUI scholarship, you will be considered for other non-resident non-resident scholarships, uh, but this gives you an idea of some of our requirements. And then to kind of wrap up, I mentioned how outdoorsy a lot of our students are. I'd be remiss to kind of skip over student life. Uh, one of the great things about being a new university is our students really get to build this place. Um, I would describe our students as very entrepreneurial. Um, they're willing to take a risk on a new place and a new university. And they're building clubs and starting things from the ground up and being really engaged. 
In that first photo, I pointed out that we do have a residence hall. Um, as a new campus, our residence halls are beautiful. Uh, you actually don't have community bathrooms. You have a private bathroom. Um, and this shows kind of the, the lounge area where our students are hanging out. Uh, currently, we have about half of our classes are offered in person and half are offered remotely uh, because of COVID. But I encourage you to learn more about OSU Cascades. Every Monday from 1 to 2, we offer live Instagram campus tours. We also have a lot of other uh, different events going on, different virtual events. Um, so please come on our website. It's osucascades.edu slash visit and learn about those different ways to connect with us because I think especially in this environment, there are so many people here ready to help you, ready to, to help you learn about our campuses. Um, so don't be shy to reach out and take advantage of those opportunities. So that's OSU Cascades. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Alex Petrolia and I am from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm, our university is in a very urban setting. We're right in the middle of the city. We're a pretty big institution as well. We have about 30,000 students attending UNLV and we're fairly young. So we were founded in 1957. So I think we're about 60, a little over 60 years old. I'm not going to do math and expose myself, which I already just did, but we're going to move on uh, to our undergraduate degree programs. We have about 300 different undergraduate and graduate degree programs at UNLV. We are probably most well known for hospitality. Our hospitality program is ranked number one in the country. Oh, these are moving on their own. Um, let me pause. So hospitality is ranked number one. Uh, we have three professional schools as well. So we have the only dental and law school in the state of Nevada, along with a medical school as well. Um, so there are a lot of different options. I usually talk with students. You do not have to have it all figured out when you go to college. Um, we have what's called an exploring major at UNLV. So if you are not really sure, this major is a really great major with for you. Um, they, you are set up with an academic advisor that's really well versed in all of the majors and really helps you um, try different classes, see what you're interested in, see what majors equal what career paths, and match you up based on those things. Now moving on, we have a very robust study abroad program. We are part of USAC, which is an organization that allows our students to go to a lot of different places. I'm um, one of our most unique academic programs is the only program of its kind in the country. It is entertainment, engineering, and design. I like to think of it as our very Vegas degree, although it far extends the Las Vegas Valley. One of our recent graduates is actually the course designer for Ninja Warrior. So if you've ever watched Ninja Warrior, that is um, a graduate from that particular program. We are also an R1 institution, which means we have very high research activity. Um, R1 institutions, there's only about 130 in the United States, and we're one of them. Um, we're very proud of this as well. Um, and your ability to get involved in that research as an undergraduate student is very high because we're a young institution. Most, at most R1 institutions, you have to wait until you're a senior or a graduate student to get really involved. And we actually had two freshmen get published with their professors, which is super unheard of. So if you want to get involved in research, and that research um, goes across all disciplines. So depending on what major you want to do, you can definitely get involved. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about on this slide is internships. So we're a very hands-on institution. The majority of our academic programs require that you do an internship as a part of your undergraduate degree program. And being in Las Vegas, we are the only major four-year institution. So our students really get first dibs at any professional opportunity within our city. And when you think about Las Vegas, it's a very global town. So the connections that you make and the experiences that you have far extend the Las Vegas Valley. All right, so um, one of our biggest traditions is UNLV Premier. It's a huge kickoff to the year, really fun event. We also have homecoming. Um, that's a really big tradition for us as well. 
We have 400 clubs and organizations at UNLV, so there's a lot to choose from. If you're interested in Greek life, so fraternities, sororities, um, to academic societies, my favorite academic society is the Baja Society. They're within the College of Engineering, and they build off-road vehicles from scratch and go and race them across the United States. I think they went to New York last summer to race there. So that's one of the really fun um, societies within the College of Engineering. Um, or there are fun ones as well. So the Pizza Enthusiast Club um, is one of my favorites. They try all the pizza across the Las Vegas Valley or the Lightsaber Duelist Club. If you're into Star Wars, we have about 90 active members within um, that society. And then athletics. We are a Division I institution, so we compete in the Mountain West. Um, we just got the Raiders in Las Vegas and they built Allegiant Stadium. Our football team actually made a deal with the Raiders that we will be playing in Raider Stadium. So we're one of 16 schools that get to play in an NFL stadium. Super excited about that. That's happening. Um, that just started this fall. So if you're incoming, you will be able to go and see football games in Raider Stadium, which is super exciting. Um, as far as admission requirements, we're looking for our first year applicants to meet one of three requirements, either a 3.0 weighted core GPA or 1120 on the SAT or 22 on the ACT. Um, ACT and SAT scores are optional, so we are not requiring them. And then as far as our um, Western Undergraduate Exchange, it is open to all majors. Um, and we are looking for our first year applicants to meet one of three requirements. So either a 3.0 unweighted um, GPA or a 1160 on the SAT or a 24 on the ACT. And then for priority deadline is November 1st for this upcoming year. So if you're a senior um, and you're going through the application process, as far as our priority deadline for scholarship consideration, our application is open. We are enrolling admissions, so it will be open all the way until June 1st. And then that's the last thing is um, definitely follow us on Instagram. I know it's really hard to get a, call, a feel um, for college and how it feels on campus, but the best way that you can do that is through these virtual events, um, registering for a virtual event on our website, and then on our Instagram is a really great place to see some IGTV videos as well. Um, but with that, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it on over. Oh, Whitney, I think you're yeah. muted. There we go. Hi, welcome to the virtual world where we always talk muted first. I'm Whitney Bonner. My colleagues also know me as the person who's always on mute. Um, but again, Whitney Bonner, I'm the Associate Director of Recruitment for the University of Northern Colorado or UNC as I'll refer to it kind of moving forward from here. So we'll go ahead and jump right in because you might be asking, well, where is UNC? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that first. Um, so we are located in Greeley, Colorado, which is about an hour north of Denver. This is a fun shot of our downtown area um, in pre-COVID times, as you will see, as there's a really fun large gathering where we do a lot of different festivals and different things. On the map, you're able to see here that we are about roughly three hours from any of our big mountain resorts. So as you may have heard about Colorado, we have seasons, we have snow, we have really amazing skiing and snowboarding, well as snowshoeing, if that's something you're interested in. We're about 90 minutes from the famous Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, very, very easy to get up there uh, in a day trip to go hiking, to see elk, to do whatever your heart desires in the mountains. Um, we have six different professional sports venues in Denver, as well as a slew of amazing concert venues. And like I said, we're only an hour away from that. Um, so it's very, very easy to get down into the city and then also come back up to Greeley uh, for some of the more fun, eclectic and cultural events that we have. 
So let me tell you a little bit more about UMC at this point. So we were founded in 1889. So we are an institution that has been around for quite some time and we are the most affordable research institution in Colorado. Uh, we have just over 9,800 undergraduate students. So we are a medium sized campus, just over a hundred different undergraduate programs. And with that, our average class size is around 27 students. Our campus is uh, spread out uh, across kind of three to four different city blocks. And so it takes probably about 10 to 15 minutes to walk across it. Uh, you see these uh, lovely people biking across campus and that's an example of bikes that you can actually rent on our campus in order to get back and forth. Uh, the other piece of information that I wanna talk about is just a little more on our education opportunities. So like I mentioned, we have over a hundred different undergraduate programs and we are a liberal arts college. And so you can see from our top 10 programs listed on the screen that there's a lot of variety in what you're able to study at UNC. We were founded as the State Teachers College. And so if you wanted to be a teacher, you came to UNC. Again, you can kind of see from that listing that we really broadened outside of teaching, but that is still something that is at our core. Uh, so we not only educate students on how to be great teachers, our teachers are also educated and have that foundational knowledge on how to be great faculty members, which is really uh, one of our, our things that we are most proud of. Compared to our peer institutions, we do score higher for learning and effective teaching. So that kind of, like I said, goes back to where our general roots are. I mentioned that we were a research institution. So we have 12 different research centers on our campus. And one of the unique things about UNC is that as an undergraduate student, you are able to complete research alongside faculty member at a higher rate than some of our larger uh, research one institutions in the state. We also, of course, have amazing uh, living ex uh, experiences on campus. We have over 17 different residence halls now, actually, with about 300 or 3,000 students living on campus with us. We have learning communities. We have a slew of different dining locations. And so our campus really does offer um, an entire experience and an entire community all in one place. And so you don't have to leave campus to go do all those amazing things I talked about earlier because you can find it all with us, um, but you can also go and do those things as well. I do wanna talk quickly about WUI at UNC because it is, um, as Matt was mentioning, we all have kind of our different uh, things. So WUI at UNC applies to all programs. And so it doesn't matter if you're interested in business or if you're interested in nursing, it will apply. Um, it does equal out to a savings of about 5,000 per year comparatively to our out-of-state tuition rate. It's automatically awarded if you are a student coming from a WUI state, um, and it also is apl applicable across four years. So you will have it for those four years that you're pursuing your undergraduate degree. And then it's a very simple application process. You simply apply to UNC and you're also being recognized as a WUI student, and then that's automatically being attached to your student profile for us. So there isn't any separate application process that you have to go through. What it looks like from a tuition uh, perspective, so for a WUI resident, it's about 28, hmm, 29,000, you can see, and that's for tuition, room and board, and fees. You can then also see, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit grainy there, uh, some of our different scholarship opportunities for WUI students. And so you can be receiving up to $6,000 uh, over the course of four years. Um, so that's something that's really amazing. So you get that $6,000 every single year, um, as long as you are maintaining good academic standing. We are awarding these merit-based scholarships solely on GPA. So test score is not taken into account this year for merit-based scholarships or for our application process. We also have a slew of other scholarships um, through the UNC scholarship application as well. Um, but the merit-based scholarships, you actually, when you apply for admission, you're applying for those at the same time. So what our application process looks like is it's simple, straightforward. We are um, on the Common App as well. So if you're interested in applying to multiple institutions, that's the easiest way to do it. It's a $50 application fee. And the only thing that we are looking for from students at this point for first year, first time students are their transcripts. We are test optional at this point. Um, and we guarantee admissions with a 3.0 GPA or above. And with that, it's like the fastest presentation I've ever given, given like 30 seconds of it was on mute because that's how I roll. Um, thank you so much everyone for the time. Uh, here is Another beautiful shot of our campus. While I know visiting in person might be kind of challenging right now, I do encourage you to visit this website that's listed. 
um, and come see us virtually, whether through a tour or meeting with some of our current students or our admissions counselors. And then I will go ahead and stop sharing as well and turn it over. Thank you, Whitney. I appreciate that. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Sarah Buswell. I work with Washington State University. This is one of my favorite photos to start presentations with just because it's a, a nice snapshot of what it's like both on campus and off campus. We are a larger university. We have just over 18,000 undergraduate students and you're looking at the bulk of campus. It takes about 15 minutes to walk from one side of the other. Though this photo is a little bit deceiving, it's incredibly hilly. Uh, we have such a thing called cougar calves. You will be in the best shape of your life when you are walking up those icy hills in 15 degree weather during the winters in Pullman. Um, when you look in the background out here, you'll see that there aren't very many skyscrapers, highways, freeways. You're really in a rural setting. And for a California student, I'm based in the Long Beach area and work with Southern California students primarily, this can be a big shock, leaving the state of California where this doesn't exist everywhere. But for many of our students, that tends to be a, it's something that they really enjoy most about campus is its rural nature. Something I like to clear up, clear up is our true location. I often get the question, well, where do I live in Seattle? Like, which, which neighborhood should I pick out? No, 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 no. We, we do not uh, reside in Seattle. We live in the eastern side of the state. A typical student would take about four and a half hours to drive from the Seattle area to our campus location in Pullman, Washington. We're about an hour and a half south of Spokane, which is going to be the second largest city in the state. The nice thing for out of state students is that most of our students come from Washington State. Most of our students come from the west side of Washington State. It takes a lot of time, energy, and effort for even our in-state students to get back home, which means that weekends, students are still on campus. Rarely is it emptying out, aside for Thanksgiving holidays, winter break, spring break, but by and large, students stick around year round, both in-state and out of state. Uh, we are in a true college town. There are just about 35,000 people living in Pullman, Washington, and 21,000 of them are college students. Someone did the math at one point and evaluated the data. The average age of a Pullman resident is 22 years old. So again, you can imagine you're at the stoplight next to you and every other person in a car next to you is also a 19, 20, 21 year old kid. But at the same time, I do like to note, cars are not necessary. It's a very walkable community and a very walkable campus. Busing and transportation is also included in your tuition and fees. There's not a real defining line between where campus ends and the city of Pullman begins. Even when you're in that downtown area, the WSU logo is painted in the intersections. Small businesses have WSU flags hanging from their windows. It's a community of kooks. Even if you're not a student, you have some tie to the university. This is such a bittersweet photo for me this year. Uh, we are part of the Pac-12 Division I, though actually I just saw today Pac-12 announced that we will begin playing football. And being a part of the Pac-12 certainly brings a lot of excitement and spiritedness to our student body. That small little college town almost doubles, if not triples, in some cases during Cougar football Saturdays. Alumni season ticket holders drive from all over the Pacific Northwest and fill our town with RVs, campers, ready for Cougar football Saturday. We do get four seasons weather and students tend to take advantage of our rural location. That means skiing and snowboarding in the winter, hiking, biking, mountain biking, kayaking, taking advantage of all of your outdoor activities in a very close proximity. We have about 400 different clubs on campus. My advice to you is to stick to two clubs, an academic-based club and that fun club. Many of our departments will have specific clubs set up to help open doors for our students, to hear about research opportunities, to hear about part-time jobs, internships, peer mentor programs. Those are funneled through those academic clubs, but also give yourself a break and join that fun club, whether it is Humans versus Zombies Club, um, Chocolate Chip Cookie Club, Disney Club, those clubs exist to allow you to unplug and just breathe a little bit. 
About 25% of our students are part of Greek life or joining a fraternity or sorority on campus. This year, we actually had our first virtual recruitment where students chose which chapter they wanted to join solely online without ever setting foot on campus or inside of a chapter house. One thing I also like to note is the 87,000 hours of community service donated annually. I think students inherently recognize that this little town really needs a lot of effort and, and support from students. The, the U5 soccer coaches are college students. The, the folks building houses and painting houses for Habitat for Humanity are college students. Reading bunnies at the elementary school, college students. So I would say that students know that this is their temporary home and they want to do the best for it while they're there. Living on campus, it is required for first year students, but it is definitely guaranteed. Preference is going to be first come, first serve. In academics, we are a tier one, R1 institute. For our first year students, we encourage them to get involved in research very early on. We actually have an entire office, the Office of Undergraduate Research, which acts as the matchmaker for students interested in researching and professors in need of additional students to help with their research projects. Study abroad is encouraged as well. The College of Business actually requires its students to study abroad. Most notably, I'd say WSU is, is well known among students wanting to major in engineering and architecture, education, nursing, and of course, agriculture and animal sciences, primarily into our vet school, of course. The Honors College, I don't have a ton of time to talk about it, but if you are interested, highly recommend it. It's going to be, um, a classroom environment that never exceeds 25 students per class and more of a discussion based model rather than a lecture hall style course. Though 80% of all of our classes at WSU have fewer than 50 students. First year students apply online. We're not a part of the Common App or the coalition. It's solely through WSU. We only require your transcripts, the application itself and a $70 application fee, which can be waived with a fee waiver. We are test blind this year. So if it costs you money to send your SAT or ACT score, please do not. We're not going to take it into consideration for scholarship or admission. Two columns here, you'll see the non-Washington resident for a traditional Californian that's going to pay out of state and a WUI recipient. And the big difference is that tuition rate, 25,000 per year versus 14,000 per year. In order to receive the WUI, you'll need a 3.6 unweighted GPA. WUI is applied to all majors and it's automatically granted to students who hit that 3.6. If you're not quite at the 3.6, we do offer additional scholarship, the Cougar Award being one of those areas to students with a 3.2 to a 3.59. And lastly, I'll end with January 31st. That is our catch-all deadline, the deadline for admission, the deadline for scholarship, the deadline for FAFSA, and May 1st being our priority deadline. And with that, let me hand it back over to Matt Allen with University of Montana Western. All right, thank you, Sarah. So uh, we are the University of Montana Western. We are a small public institution in Southwestern Montana. Dillon is where we're located. A beautiful area, we're in the Beaverhead Valley. We're surrounded by seven different mountain ranges. The Beaverhead River runs right through town. Definitely a lot more of a rural setting. Dillon itself is only about 5,000 people. Uh, university is about 1,300 students, but our average class size is 15, and we cap our courses at 25 students. So you won't have any classes larger than that. Uh, most popular majors at Montana Western are education, uh, biology. We do a fantastic job of prepping students for vet school and medical school, um, business, uh, natural horsemanship and equine sciences are also uh, very large. We have the nation's only four-year accredited degree in natural horsemanship, and then health and human performance, so kinesiology, sports medicines, uh, things like that. The thing that really makes Montana Western so unique and so different is that we are the only public institution in the country that operates on a block scheduling model. We call our program Experience One or X1, and how it works is instead of a normal semester-based system, we break our semesters into four three and a half week blocks. And then what students do for three and a half weeks is they take one course at a time. 
So all they have to do is focus on one subject, they have homework in one area, they have one professor to communicate with. And why we do this is we wanna eliminate lecture classes and focus on experiential education. So if you're an education major, you're in classrooms teaching lesson plans that you've designed. If you're an environmental science major, you're in Yellowstone National Park and you're doing research. Our goal is students to start these experiences their freshman and sophomore year, so that way when they graduate, they have two to three years of experience already in their fields of study. So whether it's a job or grad school, they have that experience to show that they're ready for that next step and have an opportunity. Each one of our block classes is worth four credits. So even though students are only taking four courses in a semester, students are taking 16 credits a semester. They're averaging 32 credits for an academic year, which is keeping them on track to graduate in a four year time period. So it's a fantastic model for students to actually learn by experiencing things, really find out what your passions are, focus on one subject. Uh, we don't have finals week. That's always a really big advantage for our students, uh, but it's a very unique approach. And we've seen our students have tremendous success uh, with this program and have a lot of opportunity after they graduate. So a couple different things that we like to say because of the block program is we like to say our classrooms are a lot more colorful just because we don't want you sitting in a classroom. Uh, this is an actual environmental science class in Montana Western. This was their classroom for three and a half weeks. They didn't have a textbook and they didn't have a classroom. They did research. And so they were out in the field uh, and they were uh, writing recommendations for reports. Those reports were making it all the way to Washington, D.C. But after that three and a half weeks, students could list that as experience. If you're an art major, imagine being able to focus on your art project for three and a half weeks, not having to worry about other classes. Uh, this is our glass blowing studio. Uh, we do scientific glass blowing. We do artistic glass blowing, so um, art students have a real advantage. Like I say, our natural horsemanship in the equine science program, you're not sitting in a classroom watching a video about it or hearing about it. You're at our equine center and you're actually working with horses. Um, our education majors, we have students that are bused to campus on rural Fridays and every single Friday our education majors are actually teaching lesson plans to students. So they're actually getting that real world experience. Um, our classes can also take you all over the world. So students can actually study abroad for a block. So for three and a half weeks, you can study in Japan, Turkey, Greece, the Galapagos Islands, Peru. Um, this was a business class that was focused on production. They went to Austria for three and a half weeks and they studied at Red Bull's production plant. They went to BMW's production plant. And as you can see, of course, they went skiing because when you're in the Alps, you have to go skiing. Um, but there's several study abroad opportunities every single year and students can actually visit multiple locations throughout their academic career. Um, definitely want to talk about WUI as well. Um, so before we run out of time, so WUI at Montana Western, uh, the WUI scholarship, we automatically award to any incoming freshman student that has a 3.0 GPA or higher. So there's no application process, nothing like that. Once you self-report your GPA in the application process and we see 3.0, we automatically give it to you. Our transfer process, um, transfer students are eligible for the WUI as well, as long as they have a 2.7 GPA or higher. So, and the only other requirement is that you have to send us a final official transcript by July 1st, just so we can verify your GPA. So if you're enrolling for fall uh, 2021, as long as we get that final official transcript by July 1st, 2021, that WUI uh, scholarship will be applied to your account. And then it can be used for all Montana Western programs. We don't have any programs that exclude the WUI program. We reaward the WUI scholarship every single year as long as you maintain a 2.7 GPA, you remain uh, a full-time student, and you may remain enrolled for consecutive semesters. We allow students to maintain WUI, the WUI scholarship up to 12 semesters, so up to six years. And then another great thing is we allow students to stack scholarships on top of WUI. So if you get the WUI scholarship and you're also getting a $4,000 academic scholarship, awesome. Stack that on top of WUI, bring that cost down even farther. So our annual tuition, so our non-resident tuition is a little under $16,000 for the year. So that is yearly tuition if you were not getting the WUI. With the WUI scholarship, your yearly tuition is dropped below $6,800. Um, what's nice is our tuition is actually frozen. It's not going to be increasing. Um, and so usually when uh, the state of Montana freezes tuition, it remains frozen for multiple years. Last time it was frozen for like six years. So tuition, nice thing is it shouldn't adjust much as a student when you're here at Montana Western. So with the WUI scholarship, it gives you an annual savings of over $9,000 a year. And like I said, we allow you to stack additional scholarships on top of that.
Um, that's kind of a quick overview of the University of Montana Western. If you'd like to hear more about us, we will have our own individual presentation on October 1st at 5 p.m. So you can go to the uh, uh, College to Career uh, website and you can actually see information for that. So, but that is Montana Western. Does anybody have questions? They're a quiet bunch. They're, all, it's they're gonna come pretty impressive to, to have five admissions professionals actually finish before our time is up. <laughs> On time. Yeah. <laughs> the Tyras must have stressed that a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, you know who these people are, so contact them if you have any other questions. And then following up, <clears throat> after you close this window, um, you'll have a very quick four-question survey. Please answer that so we can get some feedback for future sessions. You can sign up for more sessions, and then recordings are available. So you can't attend them all over these next few days, but you can go back and watch them all. So college to career fairs, connect.org, and I'm sure that was included in the emails that they sent out to you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, everyone. Good night, folks. Night.